When people speak about the caste system, they usually relate it to the injustices lower caste groups face in the Indian subcontinent. Generations of discrimination, poverty, being pushed away from society, and being alienated from higher castes, who have historically held a large share of the power in the region. We are taught that inter-caste marriages are prohibited, looked down upon, and for the longest time were very rare to come by. But many would make the assumption that this social hierarchy is just that, a social hierarchy. Something that exists within the society, impacting the culture and even material reality of the people within it. But in reality, it runs much deeper than that. According to DNA analysis, we can see the genetic differences in ancient ancestries depending on your caste meaning a Brahmin who is at the top of the caste system and the Dalit who is considered untouchable, even within the same ethnic group, will be genetically different from each other when it comes to their ancestry. And although the caste system has been outlawed in India since 1950, we still see the realities of it to this day. If you want a more in-depth video about the ancient populations that make up modern South Asians, go to my last video, I'll put the link up here. But I'll try my best to give a brief overview of it now, as it is very important to this topic. The first migrations into the Indian subcontinent were by an East Eurasian group we now refer to as the AASI, Ancient Ancestral South Indians. They were hunter-gatherers, had darker skin, broader features, and on average constitute about 40 to 50% of South Asian ancestry. However, this depends on the region in South Asia you are from, as the more northwest you go, the lower the rate of this ancestry is. By the time you reach Pashtun people, this ancestry of AASI can be around 10 to 15 percent. The second migration into the Indian subcontinent were a West Eurasian population called Iranian Neolithic farmers slash hunter-gatherers from the western Iran region. The reason I say both farmers slash hunter-gatherers is because we don't actually know for certain which one they were, as both of these groups were closely related to each other. In the last few years, there has been research papers that have concluded that these Iranian people were hunter-gatherers rather than farmers that moved into South Asia and developed farming independently of their relatives, the Iranian Neolithic farmers or the Zagros Mountain farmers. These were the first people to bring West Eurasian DNA into South Asia, meaning lighter skin, hairiness, and slimmer facial features. Finally, the last group to enter South Asia were the Indo-Aryans, who came down from Central Asia around 3,800 years ago. They were also West Eurasian, the descendants of the Yamnaya culture, the Indo-Europeans. They brought with them many cultural, linguistic, and religious aspects that went on to heavily influence South Asian society. Their gods transformed over time and became the gods of India. These three populations make up the vast majority of South Asian DNA. But how does this relate to caste? There is a correlation between caste and West Eurasian DNA, more specifically Indo-Aryan DNA. If we look at a genetic analysis of a South Indian Dalit, for example, we see that they have higher rates of AASI DNA, who were one of the first groups into India. AASI had darker skin, but it is important to note that higher AASI DNA doesn't necessarily mean you will have darker skin, and dark skin doesn't just come from AASI ancestry. However, it is seen throughout the Indian subcontinent that the lower we go on the caste system, the higher the rates of AASI DNA are, and to an extent this is reflected in their phenotype. In the case of South Indian Dalits, they actually have the highest rates of AASI DNA after Munda groups in North India. A South Indian Brahmin, on the other hand, has higher rates of West Eurasian ancestry than a Dalit of the same ethnicity coming from both Neolithic Iranian and Indo-Aryan sources. Many times they'll actually have more West Eurasian DNA than AASI, akin to many North Indian groups. They'll have an Indo-Aryan genetic input that the lower castes usually won't have. This is because when the Indo-Aryans migrated into South Asia almost 4,000 years ago, 
they set up what went on to become the caste system. Originally, the caste system was centered around Varna, which has its origins in the Rig Veda. This placed Brahmins, or priests, and to a lesser extent, Kshatriyas were rulers and warriors serving as the elite classes, followed by Vaishyas who were traders, merchants and farmers, and finally Shudras who were laborers. Outside of the system are the oppressed, marginalized and persecuted Dalits also known as untouchables. And over time, this system became increasingly rigid. Because the Varna system originated with the Indo-Aryans, they were at the top of this hierarchy. But for hundreds of years, there was still mixing between these communities. Up until two to three thousand years ago, when there was a sudden pause in the mixing of castes. Caste mobility also stopped being a thing. Because of this, when we look at the genetics of different castes, we see a snapshot of a genetic profile that is likely to have been the same for thousands of years. British colonial rule ended up making both colorism and casteism worse. British rule in India significantly worsened casteism by solidifying the caste system through census classifications, preferential treatment of certain castes, and integrating castes into administrative practices making the social hierarchy more and more rigid and entrenched than before colonial rule, while also putting lighter skin on a pedestal, enforcing Eurocentric standards of beauty in the subcontinent, which still exist to this day. The caste system, while often viewed as a social hierarchy, has left a profound impact on the genetic makeup of South Asian populations. The historical migrations of different ancestral groups in the Indian subcontinent laid the foundation of these genetic differences, which later on became reinforced through the rigid caste system. Despite being outlawed, caste-based divisions continue to shape societal realities, reflecting centuries of segregation and limited social mobility. Understanding the deep-rooted nature of the caste system, both socially and genetically, helps us recognize its lasting effects and challenges of dismantling such an entrenched structure.